it's hard to ask people about whether they waste their time. They, 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 they did. <laughs> they did, and, and it's interesting that um, what they didn't ask was the other side of that question. I mean, one of the things that, that we've always struggled with in asking that question uh, questions like that is it's sort of the allocation of a whole day. It's clear that some people are wasting time uh, online uh, on any given day at any given moment. It's also pretty clear in the, in the other kinds of questions that we and others ask that people are doing more work outside the workplace. So they're, they're checking their emails before they go to bed. They're checking their emails when they wake up in the morning. They're taking their laptop on vacation. They're, they're actually a significant number of people feel like that this is an electronic leash, that they have to answer their boss's calls, even if they have called in sick. And so what we can't get, certainly from time diary studies, is the allocation of the, of the new allocation of time in an environment where the boundary between work and home is so much different now from the way it used to be. Those used to be two separate realms and never the twain should meet. Now it's a fluid situation for lots of people, and particularly in the context of younger workers who are, yeah, they might be f Facebooking like maniacs, uh, f uh, you know, 10, well, a half an hour before lunchtime, during lunchtime, and a half an hour after lunchtime, but it also might be that they're completing their project work, that they're getting stuff done over the weekends, that they're interacting with their colleagues uh, sort of off hours, and, and stuff like that. So there's plenty of that going on. And I guess, you know, um, there was a, um, remind me who, uh, Robert Solo, the great economist, um, after about a decade's worth, uh, worth of mass adoption of uh, information technology in the 19, mid 80s, in the 1980s, uh, in the early 90s, he, he basically, I forget where he, he did it, whether it was an article or a speech, he basically said, we've had this experience um, and we've, you know, everybody says that information technology is somewhat improving um, the, our, our lives and our productivity. It's not showing up in the macro data. You know, you look at all of the productivity data, all the other stuff, it's not showing up. Four years later, it was showing up in abundance, that there were absolutely quantifiable things that um, information technology was doing to workplaces that were making workers more productive, generating more stuff for the amount of time that they were there. It usually takes between 15 and 20 years for any technology to be embraced in useful, thoughtful ways in, in workplaces. The, you know, it, for, in, the early, in the early days of electricity, every office needed its own generator. And the management of that and the extra, uh, you know, uh, whatever they were, IT staff that had to manage that was a, was a drain on company resources. Well, when they consolidated that and made it uh, available from central, you know, hubs and, and generators, and once business processes adjusted to the fact that you had constant um, power sources now, they, they, it took about 20 years for the, the power of electricity to begin to show up in the productivity of American workers. So, uh, that's a... That's a deflection of your answer, yep, there's waste going on. I th you know, a lot of people tell us that they're working harder and more than they used to if you add up all the extra stuff they do outside the offices. And, you know, companies can control that. There, there's a plenty of case law um, examples now where if, it's, if you're doing it on a company computer, on, co on company servers, or in company uh, routers, they, they own you. And so, you, you know, they can clamp down on this if they really feel like it's, uh, it's essential.